So just taking a look at a side-by-side -side comparison of a forehand swing between uh, myself and one of my students, there's a few little things that I want to maybe just try highlight that that might be uh, useful for, for players. So first thing to notice is look at the um, the angle of that racket face. Look how it's it's like the racket face is looking towards the front wall, but on my student's racket face, it's looking kind of towards the camera. So that's the first little thing. And you'll also notice the the, the high setup of the elbow there, and there's there's a very different shape between the two positions. I think from here it looks like there's too much of a, a drop and a droop in that position that the player is then going to maybe get under the ball and there's not as much body weight transfer. Whereas it looks like on my one, there's a little bit of body weight transfer and there's a little bit of force going through that ball. So that's quite an interesting image to start with. Next thing I want to just point out is is, is, is how the, the weight transfers into it. So you can see this is a very similar part because we both make contact at about the same time there. And you'll notice that on, on, on my swing on the right there, there's still this idea that the racket's quite high up and that the elbow's driving forward. Whereas at this moment, the student has dropped their racket really low. It's coming in almost under the ball. And you can kind of get a sense that this hip is dropping a bit too much. And again, maybe the body weight transfer and the, the dropping of the shoulders is a little bit limited. And if I scroll forward for the next little few points, contact points, it looks like my head is a little bit more over. Whereas again, this, this shoulder is coming down and under and it's getting under the ball a little bit. So this head position, I think, is quite important. And you look at the difference between the two there. And then finally, let's have a look at the follow through. We'll just have a quick look there at the student's wrist, how the wrist is breaking in the follow through. And the racket actually ends up going and pointing right across to that side wall there. Whereas if you notice on my side, there's, there's not much of a break of the wrist. The wrist stays relatively strong in the shot. It does roll a little bit to get that little snap. And the racket then tries to then, it goes across the side, but then tries to straighten up. That's what tends to try happen on that forehand rather than letting that forehand just go over and roll to that other side.